Trouble in Imo State as the House of Assembly leadership suspends six members, including the Chief Whip. National Assembly screams President Muhammad Buhari's aide, Doretta Onoche, over her nomination as an electoral commissioner. Opposition party says she shouldn't have been screened due to her partisanship, but Onoche claims she's no longer partisan. We will be discussing these two issues plus the regulars of the press today in history and sports with Wally Scott. And with that, we say good morning and uh, thanks for joining us here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa, the Friday morning edition. We hope it's going to be very interesting. I am Osao Gye Ogbonwa. And I am Aneta Felix. Good morning to you. And good morning, Osao Gye Ogbonwa. Good morning to you. It's a little wet, uh, actually more than a little wet this morning uh, across Lagos. It's, it's been raining since, you know, late last night, you know, and 3 a.m. It just went, you know, totally crazy. Mm. It felt like it was a complete storm in, uh, in uh, Lekki. Uh, last night. And but I hope that people really can get cold. to work this morning. Uh, for everyone who's commuting uh, to and fro, you know, work home and all of that this morning, we of course uh, wish you a, a safe ride um, in, the, in the rains this morning. Mm. All right, so our top trending stories today, um, the first one is about politics and the second about money. So regarding the politics story, we just read that teaser about Loretta Onoche. There's a whole lot of controversy regarding her nomination as an INEC commissioner based on her affiliation and membership of the All Progressives Congress. It's been a subject of debates, you know, back and forth for the past uh, few months. But the big issue here is that during her screening by the Senate Committee on the Independence National Electoral Commission, um, Loretta Onochi um, was among those who were, you know, being screened for, screened for confirmation. And... Three times she denied, I was about to say denied Christ. Yeah, like her. <laughs> okay. Three times <laughs> she denied being a member of the APC. See, I'm going to read some quotes that she, uh, you know, from her. She said, since 2019, I have not had anything to do with any political organization, including Buhari support groups. She said, when the APC was doing revalidation of party members, I did not take part in that exercise. She says, as I am sitting down here, I am not a member of any political party. I have no partisanship in my blood. I have seen many petitions against my nomination, not only from the PDP, but also from APC members. She went on to say no one has any reason to fear um, for her nomination as INEC commissioner representing Delta State. She said she follows the law and she went on to defend herself, saying she's, you know, this is basically where it all lies. It, then it, if... There's lots of controversy theories about this. If you've checked what people are saying online, they'll say that if she claims to have stopped her partisan, her eight APC membership and affiliation in 2019, it then seems like a long time coming. Maybe, you know, this was the end game for her to end up being INEC commissioner. And so she had to cut all those ties so she can claim to be nonpartisan when the time is now, when the time is right, which is not now. And also, you would remember that there's, there's been statements from Loretta Onoche, even in recent time, commenting on political matters that seem to take sides to the ruling party. So I still don't really see where exactly she drew the line between her membership with APC and you know, non-partisan politics. But this is what it is. She's defending herself. She's denied the APC three times and says, you know, the Senate has no fear. People can go, can go ahead and confirm her as any commissioner for Delta State. Well, she obviously lied. Um, and I'm hoping that the members of that committee, you know, can see that she is lying. Um, I, it, it's, you know, I, I don't understand, you know, why this is so hard, you know, and, but I, I think I understand um, why, you know, we're having this conversation in the first place, why she is even in front of uh, that committee or that hearing. Um, it is because of where, you know, Nigeria currently is. And the fact that we currently have a government that doesn't necessarily listen to the cries of the people. And we also have very, very short attention span to some of these things. Um, because I saw someone's article, you know, saying that if Nigerians really would be willing to focus on one particular thing and clamor and demand um, a change, you know, in um, one government policy or the other, um, instead of getting distracted after two days, then maybe some of these things wouldn't, um, you know, pass through, um, you know, and, and, you know, happen. But, you know, the reason is because of where we are today. So she, she obviously has lied, and there's so much evidence. Um, there's even a court statement, um, an oath um, 
It's a plaintiff's witness statement of, on, uh, of oath that uh, she has her name in it from 2021, where she says, there's a line here that says, um, that I am also engaged in active, active politics and a member of the Neighborhood Watch and also contested the local government elections under the Conservative Party in the United Kingdom. I'm also a member of the All Progressive Congress and a volunteer of the Buhari Support Organization. Um, and this is from 2021. Mm. Um, yes, uh, 30th of, uh, I'm not sure what month this is, uh, 6 May, I guess. Um, so it, it, is, it is shameful, you know, that we have found ourselves in this place. This is very much like you know, giving a, a, a gold a piece of yam to keep for you. That's, you know, where we are, we are currently with uh, nominating her. But I need, I need, you know, everyone to understand, you know, how much partisanship you, a person would have shown that at a time when they are nominated for a position like this, the whole of the country, including APC members, um, can tell that there's something wrong with this. That's how much partisanship she showed. This is not just a regular, you know, person who had, you know, APC membership maybe in 2015 or in 2018 or sometime and has just, you know, had their name as a member of the party. No, this is a person who has shown so much partisanship. So much involvement. Who has been fully involved in, in, in issues of the APC that the whole country, including her siblings, including her family members, all know that there's something wrong with you know, nominating her for a position like this. And so it's sad that we're having this conversation. It's shameful that she even really has to get to the state where they even have to have a screening and have these conversations with, you know, members of that committee. It's really, really sad. And I've also seen people say, well, this basically is a reminder that there's, there's really nothing uh, that Nigerians should hope for with the 2023 elections. You know, these are really just signs that that election may not be free and fair. Mm -hmm. It's very, very likely that, you know, if the, the government can see that there are these concerns about the people that they nominate for these commission and has thrown, you know, a you know, blind eye and, you know, decides to ignore all these concerns, then there's so much more that would very likely be ignored, um, you know, as a concerns concerning the free and fair elections. And so um, we, you know, as Nigerians have also lived through times where we've seen politicians who have no honor. Because if um, Loretta on the chair, as, as, you know, as, as a person, had any honor, she, she would have, have declined. She would this, have declined. Yes. There's really no, go get another job. You know, I'm sure you must have been doing something. You were an to the president in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Stick with that responsibility or find some other place that she can be put, but not with the elections. But we have no honor. And these are persons who switch party to party every two weeks. You know, whenever, you know, every three market days, they decide a new party they're going to join. And so... That's where why we are where we are today, and it's it's once again very 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 shameful. when we even you know decide to take away the decision by the presidency to nominate her as INEC Commissioner for Delta State, take a look at the person Loretta Onochi, her personality. You'd find that even while she was aide to the president, she was never a favorite of the people. There was just so much opposition and criticism of her personality and of her views. Do you, do you understand what I'm talking about? When she puts out statements, when she puts out tweets, how people respond to that and say, you're just so against the people, you're just so partisan, you're just so... So the, the reaction towards her personality and who, what she represents wasn't one of favor with but the it's, people. It's not, it's not the people's fault. It is because a lot of people can see... Uh, beyond her statements and realize that this person would no, exact, rather stay exactly. on the that's, side that's, of partisan politics that's where than I'm on going. the side of truth. That's where I'm, so it makes, you, it makes you wonder if this is someone who, you know, is not in the good books of Nigerians as a, as a country. Out of her own doing. That's Exa the Exactly. No, it's that also, that, that's part of it. What I'm saying is, can't the presidency pick someone that there's a consensus on the person's integrity and what the person represents? I mean, if Nigerians are not satisfied with her performance in office and, and you know, her views regarding politics and, and, you know, the Nigerian state, why is it that the presidency doesn't just listen? Why is it that it, it seems that they do not listen to Nigerians and they do the opposite of what the people want? It, we, it should be a government of the people. It should be a government that does, you know, that serves the interests of the people. But yeah. when, you, when you have a government that, you know, people are clamoring for one thing and it's the opposite you give them, so listen, it, 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 it's, it just is weird. So well, while I did radio, um, a lot of times I spoke with people that... Uh, came on on the radio that I interviewed to blindly defend certain policies of you know one government or the other. Um, they knew that they were lying. They knew that they were talking nonsense. But you know because they felt like they would get favors from that government, 
they you know wear regulars you know to defend any you know government policy whatsoever and different political parties um and a lot of times you know after the radio show they would admit that okay i know i'm lying but you know you know as he been wow they would even kind of admit that to you so yeah you know after, i mean when the mics are, are off so there's a lot of these persons in nigeria who um you know would take you know that um, um, route in life you know that's who they are simply because of what they feel they will benefit and so whatever it is that she has been doing all this while is because there is the expectation that she would be in quote settled by the government that she has been defending so far and that's it's, it's pretty much the same thing with a lot of these characters that you see in you know in, in the media space today who you know get granted interviews who get you know to come out to you know do a, set up a counter protest who get to you know set up you know their own small committees and say you know committee of uh, Ogunabo market men <laughs> in support of so so and so governor or president they, those, those kind of things um, it's mostly because they feel like they will get you know some settlement at the end either financial settlement or you know a, you know a job or you know an appointment at some point and that's really where she has been um, there's a couple of others you know that because what well, they're not part of are there no other them. qualified non-partisan women well the if, government wants if, to settle uh, the way it looks the government will settle the people who have been you know on their side for that, a long that, time, that's so. that's a shame but there are other people who are qualified who you know whose integrity we can vouch for to some extent i mean Loretta onoche is not the only person you know someone else can fill in those shoes if there's so much opposition to her character then someone else should fill in those shoes. Funny you're talking of qualifications <laughs> when a court just gave a judgment saying that you don't need to have served the country, you know, with the NYSC for you to be appointed uh. minister. You don't. <laughs> what qualifications are you talking about then? Do you remember when people were saying even if he has NEPA certificate, you know, we'll vote for him? Do you remember all of that? So what? What qualifications? Let, let, let's talk about money now. Maybe, really maybe we might be happy. But sadly, it's not, a, it's not a great story regarding money this morning. And it's the FIRS, the Federal Inland Revenue Service, uh, made a shocking revelation yesterday that MultiChoice has never paid value added tax since its inception. Remember a few um, weeks ago when we were speaking about um, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, Vice President of Nigeria, and how he spoke with you know the tax body in Nigeria regarding taxing um, institutions like global financial global institutions like um, Twitter, Facebook, and the rest, you know, big fintech companies like that. There was lots of opposition to that. People say, oh, this is just a follow-up to the Twitter ban. But the financial analysts that came on the show helped us to break it down and, you know, made people see that there is some sense in this, there is money to be made, there is revenue to be made by the Nigerian government when they tax foreign companies like this. Because even in their own countries, for example, in the US, all these other countries like, you know, Google and Facebook and the rest, they pay taxes to the government, right? Now, VAT multi-choice. The story here is that they have never paid and the FIRS is raising the alarm over the level of non-compliance by Multi-Choice Africa, MCA, and the parent company, Multi-Choice Nigeria, MCN, saying the company has never paid taxes since its inception. Also, the story doesn't end there. We also see that the FIRS has frozen the accounts of multi-choice and has appointed banks to, to recover 1.8 trillion naira tax liabilities. My only fear now is the Amcon versus what's the other one now? How they begin to fight over who owns this, who, who owns the taxes, who should receive the money. But it's it's a shame that Nigeria is a country that should be making, you know, should be generating revenue from all these um, streams by, you know, through taxes, we're not getting them. When Nigerian businesses, when Nigerian people or Nigerians go abroad to set up businesses, we pay taxes. I have people who have businesses abroad, they pay taxes. I mean, everything is regulated because yeah. definitely it's, it's a whole value chain regarding the economy, so the government has to receive its dues. Well, I, but I, I, here I, in Nigeria, it seems like a different kettle of fish. Yeah, so I, I, I wouldn't put you know, the Twitter uh, you know, uh, conversation in the same place with the <coughs> choice. And, you know, it seems like two different... Um, um, you know, things entirely. Montechoice has offices here, they employ Nigerians here, they have people here working for them, they have offices across the whole country. Um, and so, you know, it's a different thing from Twitter. Who, it, but you know, the, the presidency did mention here. that it doesn't matter um, whether you have offices or not. Yeah, as long saying, as you operate I'm, I'm saying, in the country, Nigerians are beneficiaries of your services, you have to pay tax. That's that's what he said. Well, I personally just wouldn't put it in the same series. Um, but I agree with, you know, being able to expand our tax bracket instead of increasing taxes, you know, find ways to, you know, develop systems to increase <laughs> the number of people that, you know, the tax bracket captures. 
Um, for the multi-choice uh, conversation, um, you know, I personally, I don't, I feel like, um, you know, in the next couple of days we will know a little bit more um, because it makes no sense that since they've been here in, in Nigeria for more than a decade, they've never paid any um, value-added tax. It makes absolutely no sense. And it's hard to believe that. So maybe they have not been paying exactly what they should have been paying. And there should be questions, uh, you know, for, you know, whoever it is that was in charge of FIRS, um, you know, all these many years that they've been there where they, they were in pain. You know, what was the person doing? Who was meant to be monitoring uh, uh, multi-choice um, um, accounts? Who was meant to be auditing and ensuring that they paid that, you know, turned their, you know, their face away? So those questions should also be, you know, be brought in here. Have they paid? Have they not paid? Have they paid be, uh, below what they should have been paying? Um, we will find clarity on some of all these things. And yes, I once again agree, um, taxation, um, there should be more people added to the tax bracket. There should be better systems with regard to taxation to ensure that every single penny that um, it should belong to the Nigerian government goes to the Nigerian government. And at the end, you know, when we are able to raise revenue through you know better um, taxation systems, then you know hopefully we will be able to you know stop borrowing and we'll be able to use those you know funds to fix infrastructure and fix the you know the, the things that we currently lack as a nation for Nigerians. Um, so I'm just going to leave it as, let's see what the next couple of days brings. Let's see what Defense Multi-Choice has. Let's see where they go from here. Um, and um, best of luck to them. If they haven't been paying, then they, they definitely should pay yes. that $1.8 But we'll see. All we'll right. take a break here to join Mr. Jilly Johnson as a Chief Lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism um, for Off the Press. Do stay with us.